All right, welcome back to ABA exam review in our BCBA task list series. We're continuing today with concepts and principles and B9. You might have noticed we skipped B8. That's because it's mildly redundant from what we'll talk about later on in the series. And so we just combine that into one in a later video. We will get back to it. Don't worry. So that being said, we're going to B9, operant extinction. In other words, extinction procedures. So, as always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. As always, work hard, study hard. Let's get going. So, operant extinction. Operant extinction is just the clarification that we're not talking about respondent extinction. But in practice, when we say extinction, we mean operant extinction. So, what is operant extinction? Well, the strength of a conditioned operant, so some sort of response or behavior, may be diminished by withholding its reinforcement. And that's our technical definition. Simply stated, when reinforcement is withheld for a previously reinforced behavior, or when reinforcement is not given, a response will occur less frequently. That's extinction, right? We're withholding reinforcement for a previously reinforced behavior. As a result, that behavior decreases or occurs less frequently. One thing to remember is extinction and punishment are not the same. They're very distinct things. So if we look at our question, which of the following examples represents an extinction procedure? Well, we're looking for extinction procedures. And don't confuse punishment with extinction. Yes, they both work to decrease behaviors. They're not the same thing. So, A, ignoring behavior maintained by attention. Sure, that could function as an extinction procedure. If attention is the maintaining variable and we're withholding it, that's extinction. B, response blocking. Probably the most confused or misunderstood idea is that response blocking is not extinction. In order to implement an extinction procedure, you must allow the learner the opportunity to engage in the response. Because if they can't engage in the response, how do you expect to withhold reinforcement? C, positive practice over correction is a punishment procedure. And then D, contingent exercise is also a punishment procedure. So out of these, which of the following represents an extinction procedure? What's well, going to be A, ignoring behavior maintained by attention. Moving on, implementing ex extinction. Remember, should be done 100% of the time. Nobody's perfect. We need it as close to 100% as possible. Meaning, when you want to design an extinction procedure, you need to make sure the stakeholders are on board. If there's a mom or a dad or a teacher or somebody who's not willing to do extinction 100% of the time, you might have to consider other options. Extinction is not always easy. Sometimes it's actually pretty hard. If we don't do it 100% of the time, what happens? Well, what happens is we start to, or the learner starts to get reinforced intermittently. So, we can potentially make the behavior worse if we're putting on extinction five days out of the week, and then one day they get a lot of reinforcement. The long time in between reinforcement, making that reinforcement schedule thicker, or I should say thinner and thinner, right? Which makes it harder to put on extinction. If they receive reinforcement every six days, it's a lot harder to withhold it than if we have a very tight reinforcement schedule. Extinction should be as close to 100% of the time as possible. Now, this is a pretty simplistic way of viewing it, but let's just consider it as a learning opportunity. If the behavior is maintained by positive reinforcement, then on extinction, pretty, pretty obvious, behaviors do not produce reinforcement, right? If normally something is given as reinforcement, something is added, if it's on extinction, that behavior won't produce that reinforcement. If it's negative reinforcement, maintaining the behavior, well, then behaviors do not remove the aversive stimulus. In other words, escape, right, is not possible. And then automatic reinforcement, which is very difficult to put on extinction. Most of the time, automatic reinforcement extinction involves the aversive sensory stimulation is not removed. One example might be a bug bite that you itch, let's say, the, the itching doesn't remove the itchiness of the bug bite. It's automatic reinforcement, extinction. If you're using a 
uh, Q-tip to try to get earwax out of your ear and you can't get it, that's automatic reinforcement extinction. The aversive sensory stimulation is not removed. Now, clearly with your functional behavior assessments and your treatment plans, you're going to be more detailed and precise in this, but this is a good overview of how extinction works. So question, a child engages in tantrums when told they cannot buy a toy at the store. How could this behavior be put on extinction? Remember, extinction is function-based. So we always want to identify the function because the function is really going to tell us, well, what's maintaining, what's the reinforcing property or what's reinforcing this behavior. In this case, the child engages in tantrums when they can't buy a toy at the store. So they're trying to do what? Trying to obtain a tangible. So if we want to put tantrums on extinction, what must we do? Well, obviously, we need to withhold the reinforcement. Ignoring the tantrum behavior, well, the child isn't doing it for attention, right? So the attention isn't maintaining it. We're worried about getting this tangible. So what we don't want to do is provide the toy to the child if we're going to put it on extinction. C, block sensory stimulation from tantruming. That would be automatic reinforcement extinction. And then prevent escape of the child. Well, he's not trying to escape. He's trying to obtain a tangible. So ignoring the tantrum has to do with attention. Blocking sensory stimulation has to do with automatic. Prevent escape has to do with escape. We're worried about the tangible. That's why we picked B. It's tangible. The function is tangible. We're going to withhold the tangible reinforcement. What else do we need to consider? Well, we have to consider uh, emotional outbursts can be called. So extinction can lead to um, rage and whining, crying, aggression. Uh, uh, extinction-induced aggression is a very real, real thing where we're going through extinction burst. And not only is the uh, target behavior on extinction increasing, but we've also started to see aggression um, Kids who are never aggressive in their lives sometimes can become aggressive on with, with extinction if that learning history is strong enough. So we just have to be careful, right? We have to be ethically considerate of extinction. If we're dealing with self-injury and things like that, you've got to be very careful about what you do with that behavior. We can't ignore something like that, okay? You also have to be aware that if aggression starts occurring, well, you might need to reevaluate your plan because we don't want to fix one problem but create a whole new one. And then resistance to extinction. All this means is behavior that continues during extinction. So behavior is continuing despite your extinction efforts. Why? One, intermittent reinforcement, like we talked about. If the schedule is very intermittent, very thin, it's much harder to put on extinction, right? Because it's hard to withhold reinforcement consistently. High motivation to continue, so motivating operations are at play. A long learning history of reinforcement and response effort. Okay, if, if response effort is, is pretty, you know, response effort can dictate whether or not it's even worth engaging in. If the response effort is pretty low, then, you know, resistance to extinction might be a lot higher because it doesn't cost anything to continue, even though you're not getting the reinforcement. So resistance to extinction can be caused by several different factors. All things you need to consider when designing your plan. Finally, what are the secondary effects of extinction? And these are probably what you're most familiar with. Extinction burst, spontaneous recovery, and resurgence. The extinction burst, of course, is that predictable and temporary increase in behavior as a result of extinction. So if we have our graph here and we have our behavior and then we put it on extinction, temporary increase, right, is our up to an extinction burst. So we are predictable and then behavior drops back down. And then what tends to happen? Well, all of a sudden that behavior pops back up. And why? Well, spontaneous recovery. It's a reemergence of a previously extinct behavior. And then the one that's not as often talked about is resurgence. The resurgence is similar to spontaneous recovery, but with resurgence, whatever alternative behavior was put in place now also stops receiving reinforcement. So everything's on extinction. So they've got to pick a new behavior and if you don't continue reinforcing the alternative behavior, they might go back to the old one. So if it looks just like spontaneous recovery, just for a different reason. So again, extinction burst, predictable temporary increase, spontaneous recovery, reemergence of a previously extinct behavior, and then resurgence similar to spontaneous recovery, but behavior reappears when an alternative behavior stops receiving 
reinforcement. Great. Pretty straightforward lesson. Uh, extinction is something you probably learned as an RBT if you were an RBT. It's a basic concept. However, it is one of those three primary agents of behavior change, right? Reinforcement, punishment, extinction. You've got to be an expert. You've got to be a master of extinction. Very powerful. But remember your considerations. Extinction can go very wrong and be very difficult to implement if we don't do it correctly. As always, check out behavioranalyststudy.com. Please like and subscribe. Let us know when you pass, work hard, study hard. See you soon.